In the early evening of October 14, 1902, the head candidate of the Bull Moose Party, also known as the National Progressive Party, was giving a speech in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Upon leaving his hotel room and entering his open roof car, a man stepped out of the crowd and fired point blank a shot into the candidate's chest. After the would-be assassin was apprehended and the candidate checked his vitals and seeing no blood was in his lungs, he ordered his driver to continue their route so he can give his speech. Upon arrival to the auditorium, a group of doctors performed a brief medical examination where they discovered that his 50-page speech, double-folded and placed in his large wool overcoat's breast pocket, had completely stopped the round, but not a large bruise. Kenneth, thinking he was generally fit to continue, went on to give a nearly two-hour-long speech, just a little slower and raspier. This candidate was Theodore Roosevelt, and it's hard to believe that this man that would go on to do this great feat was born a sickly young boy in 1858 in New York. He was born to a southern mother and an northern father during time of American unrest. Like all the other Roosevelt children, he suffered from many physical ailments, specifically to him, nearsightedness, which he caused him to wear glasses throughout his life, and a lack of breathing, which he would have to take long carriage drives with his family to have air enter his lungs. Overcoming this later on in his life, he, during his years at Harvard, he ran into his future wife, Alice Hathaway Lee. Miss Lee, who he proposed to once and courted several times after that, eventually married Ted Theodore Roosevelt, and after she was pregnant, he went on a brief vacation to rough it out in the Dakotas. Upon his arrival home, he continued a political career in which one of his debates in February of 1884, uh, during one of those debates, Theodore Roosevelt received a telegram from his sister stating that his wife, Alice, had given birth to a daughter. Overjoyed, he continued his speech and excited to go home until he received a second telegram from his sister stating that his wife was gravely ill due to the illness, due to the birth. He, hearing this, he left the debate early. And upon arriving home, he also learned that his mother was sick with typhoid. Later that evening, his mother would, fall, would pass from her illness, and 12 hours later, his wife would pass from the birth. In his grieving state, Pre uh, Miss Roosevelt was stated in saying, all the lights had gone out for my life. And to honor his deceased wife, he named his daughter Alice after her. One of the much later on in his life, during his presidency, Theodore Roosevelt, an avid big game hunter, was invited by the governor of Mississippi, uh, Andrew H. Longino, to, for a bear hunt. Not down, to, not one to back down from a uh, big game hunt. Theodore went, and during his time there, he could not find a single bear. And Longino, not wanting to disappoint his superior, ordered a young man to go corner a bear and tie it to a willow tree. Upon seeing this sight, President Roosevelt felt this was unsportsmanlike and not fair for the animal, so he refused to shoot. As the story spread and was changed, a political activist uh, drew a, a brief political cartoon about Teddy and his bear. This political cartoon reached a couple in New York by the name of Morris and Ruth Meacham, who, already making stuffed animals, decided why not make Teddy's bear themselves, and once they sold from the man's uh, candy shop in Brooklyn. This story of Teddy's bear, eventually referred to just shortly as Teddy's Teddy Bears, was or became an international phenomenon, and are still popular quite to this day. President Roosevelt was a was a man of, who had th thousands of stories of his life. These were just a, br a few of them that showed his growth as a man and his uh, excellent character.